Hello, everybody. I think I have everybody shocked backstage because I have 50 slides to go through in five minutes, but it's one very big city and I'm on Mexican time, so please bear with me. Um, so I, it's crazy to think nowadays that it's been only a year and a half since I've been a government virgin because a year and a half ago, the only relationship that I had with my government was voting every, once every six years and maybe sometimes every 12 years. Um, so for the last year and a half, I've been heading a new experimental area, creative think tank for the Mexico City government, reporting directly to the mayor which is still quite wild to think about. And um, so basically we're part of an international family of laboratories. Uh, some, of them, uh, some of us directly in government, some of us funded by government, and we all have very different agendas, work under, under different ministries. But I think one thing that we share that is quite interesting is that we basically give government the possibility of experimenting and taking risks. So in many ways we mitigate uh, the risk and we allow people to try different things, th different methods, and also bring different people in. What probably makes Laboratorio para la Ciudad, our, our experimental area, a little bit different is the city that we live in. Um, as David mentioned, we're 22 million people and counting. 50% um, of our population is actually under 26 years old, so imagine more or less around, what is it, seven San Francisco's that are under age 26, or imagine five San Francisco's getting onto the subway every day. And that is more or less, when you talk about scale, the scale that we work in. Um, so it obviously poses quite a challenge, but I think also huge, huge possibilities. So we have two main areas of interest. One of them is civic innovation that basically, as you all know, means rethinking the relationship between government and civil society and seeing what new things are possible, especially due to new technology that is out there, as well as urban creativity. I was lucky enough to not necessarily step into government alone, but actually step in with a wonderful crew of people, many of them that were leading their own foundations in civil society. So I have every, everything from um, artificial intelligence experts to historians, artists, designers, filmmakers, editors, writers, uh, experts in international relationships, et cetera, et cetera. So it's quite a motley crew for government. Probably the average age is 28 years old. Um, and so I always like to say that we're actually the first civic innovation experiment of the lab. This is, our, this is the place where we work. This is our rooftop. This is Laboratorio para la Ciudad, and since we're very interested in open government, we thought that the first thing that should be open government was our space itself. So we've been very proud in this last year and a half to not only have government become a place for services and complaints, and not only have our mayor and other civil servants and politicians uh, hosting events at the lab, but also amazing international people such as Perry Chen, who was with us for a month as our second resident, uh, co-founder of Kickstarter, as you probably know. Uh, Eric Christman, co-founder of Ushaidi and Brick, uh, Skylar Tibbetts that's doing 40 printing. And so in many ways, it's very interesting to make a little tiny corner of government a place for ideas and citizens and, and re new thought in general. We, we work as a good laboratory should um, in terms of experiments. And we, and, and we not only do digital stuff, but we have urban interventions, we start conversations, but we also try to be a, both a think tank and a, as well as a do tank for the Mexico City government. So we've done everything in terms of digital uh, platforms from f social thermometers where we can just get a sense of what is happening in the city to having 7,000 kids hacking uh, and playing urban, urban digital interventionists with the plaza that that's actually our, our lab up there, as you can see. So just like giving ideas to the city of what places in the city should become to also working in open innovation and trying to really bring in a lot of citizen talent to the government office. We are also trying to be strategic. Since we're very interested in civic innovation, we thought we should take a step back. And we've been working with all the ministries, and especially four of them, in creating a, a whole strategy for the Mexico City government in terms of open government. Um, we also prototype for the first time, for example, interoperability and different ministries sharing data with our Laboratorio de Datos, Laboratory for Data, that has inspired like the official uh, page of the Mexico City data team. And we, since we know that one of the complaints about data in general is, if it, is it relevant, does it have a community around it, we've started creating events such as Hack of Efe, which was the first data festival in Mexico City. 
And this is a quote of Ryan Klosner, a TED for Amer uh, Code for America fellow. And it says, Mexico does not mess with her hackathons. Line around the block for Hackadefe, 300 people and counting, Dios mio. We ended up with 500 people, 200 people on the waiting list four days after we just put out the news on social media. This is part of our hackathon, so we stress test all the data sets that we put out for the first time, very interesting things. Uh, everything from bike sharing system, but also more sensitive data, such as health data that is, was out there for the very first time, as I mentioned. But we think that data should not only be something that the government put out there. So we're now experimenting in what happens in a city that, for example, 60% of transport is actually informal. How do we get data back from the citizens? How do we have like this joint platform where both government and citizens are actually donating, donating their data for, for better government and better city services. We also were very happy to partner with Code for America and launch Code for Mexico City that was born two months after we were. This is our first generation of six amazing programmers. And they have to deal with the scale of the city as well. So one of them that was dealing with uh, public transport, Mexico City has 100,000 taxis, and it also has 20,000 of these that are actually pirate taxis, uh, so they're fake. And unfortunately, in these 20,000 pirate taxis that are out there, unfortunate things can happen, and there's, there's robberies and things like that. Um, so many people actually are wary of using public transport because, like, just, uh, sorry, uh, using taxis because of this. So one of the projects that we worked on, uh, Miguel Moran, that was one of the fellows, was Traxi. So for the first time, he was dealing with uh, data from different ministries, and especially important was the data from the, from, uh, transport ministry where you could actually see that the, ta the taxi is, is a true taxi and then would also create um, an algorithm of how safe the taxis are and just like a historical, historical data on the safety of these taxis. Not only that, but it's also sending data back to the ministry about uh, where people are going so we can start thinking about better public policy in terms of of uh, transport. Another project very quickly that they did um, in their spare time was actually a app that listens to satellites and they won second place in the international NASA competition so we were incredibly proud of them. And uh, so basically what are the things that, are, that we're working on right now is uh, open government law and open data law. So just like basically thinking about how we can not only provide practical services from within the government, but also working with amazing people, uh, such as Gilberto Esparza, who's creating these amazing projects, um, and thinking that this also could be civic tech. This is, this is called No Man of Plants, and it's a symbiotic creature between plants and animals that can actually live for a month in the wild and has been an amazing way of talking about um, environmental issues because it can also clean the water of dirty, contaminated urban rivers and it lives off of that because of these amazing processes. So we've been fortunate enough to be able to do very practical, very strategic things but also start playing around with different possibilities that Civic Tech could afford, a city of 22 million people and basically trying to bring in a whole cohort of unusual suspects into government and trying to change the paradigm that maybe instead of thinking of Mexico City as a place of 22 million minds, under a different paradigm with help of tech, we can actually start thinking of um, just like amazing amount of talent to be tapped into. Thank you very much.